I wonder whether we can get through this conversation without mentioning Francis Urquhart. I w- doubt it very much. Would you prefer that we did? <laughs> I, 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 I'm having a lot of problems sort of getting away from him, but at the same time I have to acknowledge that without the opportunity of having played Francis Urquhart, I would just be the same jobbing actor that I was before. Um, you you see, were more than a jobbing actor. Well, yes. You were so, a lead with the uh, Royal Shakespeare well, Company. Well, the Royal Shakespeare Company. I was a classical actor, um, but I was not a household name by any manner of means, mm. despite the fact that I was the mole in Tinker Tailor's Ode to Spine. I'll tell you about that if you're interested in just a moment. Mm. But what happened with Francis Urquhart was it sort of brought me into prominence, uh, and I was a recognisable face as well as a recognisable name. Mm. And so I have to acknowledge that Francis Urquhart has done a great deal for my career. I have to ask you how you found the character. How, where did you go looking for that character? I knew, I knew an extremely elegant, urbane diplomat in Japan, whom I met when I was touring with the RSC in Tokyo and Osaka and other places in Japan. And he was with the British Council. And his entire demeanour, his delivery, his wit, his wicked little twinkles of the eye, I remembered acutely and stole them all. Did Actors you? are magpies of mm. human experience, mm. and I magpied this man. The rest of it came from Andrew Davis, who wrote the screen adaptation. <laughs> Incidentally, Andrew has just completed, and is being shown now in England, um, uh, 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 up, um, not upstairs, downstairs. The Forsyth Saga. So eventually, oh, it's coming again. Yeah, doing it, doing it again. And I thought, bad idea, bad idea. But because it was Andrew Davis, the first epi- episode has gone out with wonderful reviews, and it was the same with House of Cards. Mm. He turned what was a novel that you would pick up at a railway station or an airport building bookstall in order to pass the journey time. Um, he turned it from that kind of book into a classic. He was responsible for the famous phrase, you may very well think that, I couldn't possibly comment, which is now in the book of quotations. Which is now the one that gets misquoted all the time, yes, I, I think, was, I it? was saying earlier on, uh, when I was talking to some, some of the people who are looking after the publicity for our program here, I was saying that I took my wife on a holiday to the Bay of Naples, and we did the inevitable climbing up to the top of the Mount Vesuvius. Vesuvius and looking <laughs> into the crater, and a voice beside me <laughs> said, yeah, you were grand in that telly. What was it? You might think that, but I'm not going to say now. <laughs> How to get it really badly wrong. <laughs> so I said to him, I, I, I thought, either I strike him or, or, or I, I walk or push away. him in the and volcano. I said, I said to him, have you noticed how the crater is smoking quite a lot more? I think we'd better go away, don't you? He scuttled off down the hill. <laughs> Gorgeous. You mentioned Bell, the the um the Professor doctor, Bell, Professor yeah. Bell, who was the model yeah. thought to have been yeah. the the model for for Sherlock Holmes, yeah. who you played. Yeah. You also played Sherlock Holmes, didn't you? In 1982, I played two Sherlock Holmes films: The House, Hound of the Baskervilles, yes, and The and Sign the of Four. Sign and of I was four. going to go on and do another five, but my late friend Jeremy Brett had agreed with Granada to do the lot. Uh, we didn't know this, the American producers and I, uh, we didn't know it. Uh, and the American producer took Granada, or threatened to take Granada, to court. They, in mm. fact, settled out of court for a staggering sum of money. Mm. So the American producer said bye-bye, took his two films, and went back to America, and, and Jeremy then went on to make history. But you have the distinction. But you know, in a, I said to him afterwards, I said, you know, because rather in the same way as uh, Basil Rathbone's entire career was wrecked by playing Sherlock Holmes, Nobody sees them as any other character, you know, yes. and it was the same with poor Jeremy. And, uh, well, I, and it could also be said to be the same with Francis Urquhart. You become typecast. Uh, yes, into that but fortunately, sort of... uh, I, I only did three series, as you know, and in actual fact, while you mentioned it, let me tell you that when they went for the third series, I only agreed to do it on condition that he wasn't alive at the end. Oh, I see. So you killed him off. Yeah. That was the, the only way to get rid of him, <laughs> kill him off. <laughs> yes.